There is the reason we have King Charles III and Queen Camilla in the imperial state crown and Queen Mary's crown waving to the thousands of people who are thronging the Mall, who have braved the rain and are here to witness an historic moment. And we see there the pages who, I have to say, did behave very well getting a moment that will stay with them for the rest of their lives. And also, Queen Camilla is joined by the two ladies in attendance who helped her with her train and doubtless steadied the nerves too this morning as she was getting ready. A wave to the crowd and the crowd waves back. Robert Hardman, I believe as a very young prince, was it aged just two mm -hmm. that Charles made his first balcony appearance? Yep, it was 1951, um, and he was he was two, and uh, he he came out. Uh, they normally wait till you're sort of two or three. Or the queen came out as a baby in arms, but there we are. This is this is uh, the rest of the the family joining, and now the working family. It's quite interesting. That we're seeing there all those who still undertake. Uh, engagements, regular engagements, and their children. Um, but I mean, this, this is such an important moment because this is the first time he has led the family out as king. He's been on that balcony, as you say, Kirsty, since he was tiny. Um, he can just about remember the coronation balcony moments, and ever since then he's been seeing these scenes. But you know, he's leading them today. He's the one they're here to see. He does look relaxed. He's taking it all in, and it must be quite a scene to be on the receiving end of. And when you say working members, I mean, obviously we've got children there, we've got the pages uh, today, some of them better known faces than others. Take people through the working members of the royal family. The, the working members, they're the ones who, who um, appear each day in what we call the court circular. There we see the, the new Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh there, Prince and Princess of Wales there. Then the pages, who the King's pages, the Queen and, and her pages uh, there to her left. But it's, it's the... the this is, this is sort of, in a way, recognising those who, whose day-to-day -day job is supporting the monarchy. Uh, they are, you know, the, the king's eldest son, the prince, prince, princess of Wales, and uh, Princess Anne, of course, the princess royal, the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh. And also, it's nice to see there the, the elder cousins, as the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester, Princess Alexandra, the Duke of Kent. They still play a part in this sort of broader... Uh, royal frontline unit, if you like. Um, it, you know, they may not make their headlines every day, uh, but they're still there. They've got their patronages, and and the king feels a great uh, debt of gratitude to them. So on a day like today, he's saluting them. What we haven't got here is all the extended cousins and cousins of cousins and that sort of thing that we we, we used to see at perhaps a birthday parade. I think underlying the messaging here is, you know, this is today's a, a, a day about the monarchy rather than about me myself. Yes, very interesting point, and I suppose such a special day when those, uh, those youngsters have been involved. You want to say a sort of thank you. Oh yeah, they've been working there's today. There's a deal of pressure <laughs> on those youngsters to go out there and behave well. Also very interesting to see, well, there we are, oh. a wave from two very popular people. <laughs> Not in a wheelbarrow around the garden today, but something altogether different. And here we see, John, the helicopters coming in. Yes. Through the clouds, through the rain, they've made it. Exactly, they've battled through. So this is the, the first of five formations of helicopters we'll have ahead of the Red Arrows. And what you're seeing is a formation, uh, the, the first ones were a formation of three Juno helicopters, sort of training helicopters from number one flying training school. Um, and interestingly, on the second of those helicopters is squadron of Rich Allardson, who was actually one of uh, Prince William's flying instructors when he was going through his helicopter training. So there's a nice royal connection there. And also interesting that these uh, the helicopters can fly lower, so that's one of the reasons it's safe for them. They can, and, and they have slightly different rules when it comes to cloud base and, and how close to the weather they can get because of their slower speed. Right, and even though it's very rainy then, it's not too dangerous for them today? Uh, it, it's within the safety limits. It, it's right on the edge, which is why unfortunately we couldn't get the other aircraft, but, but absolutely within limits for the helicopters and for the Red Arrows. And so they're coming right overhead. Here them now. Right over the palace. Everybody looks up. And so at the King top of the himself, screen. Sorry, go ahead. No, so I was, I was, the top of the screen there was, was the army formation, so a, a Wildcat and two of the uh, AH 64s. So they're coming over now. So we've got formations initially from the, the Navy, then the Army, then the Royal Marines, 
and then finally the Royal Air Force. And the King and the Prince of Wales both looking up there and understanding both as helicopter pilots. That's interesting. It is. They know what it takes. Well, we've got the first monarch who could fly a helicopter. Um, he was, uh, he, in, in his naval days, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but he, he, was, uh, he was actually a very good Wessex helicopter Indeed, pilot. Yes. He was top of his class, so he knows uh, what, what's going through their minds. And, of course, the, the, the Prince of Wales uh, has flown many helicopters, so there's a lot of expertise up there. If, if they're flying the wrong way, I'm sure they won't just uh, hear about it from their immediate bosses. Now, you see, everybody else is tilting their heads up, apart from the King and Queen, but, of course, they've got, they've got something to be mindful of, so it's just eyes up for them. One, an occupational hazard of the head that wears the crown is you can't, either, you can't look down. As the Queen used to say, you've got to read your speech looking straight ahead. So they're making a, a fair sound. We can see the windows of the, the palace there, even having a little shudder as those helicopters went past. And one of the things that I certainly wondered today is how would the crowds be? Would it be a huge crowd? And, and we have a very, a very definite answer, Robert Hardman, in that. Yeah, we do. I mean, the, the crowds aren't as big as they, as, as, as they possibly could be because, um, uh, because of the new sort of uh, system they have for, for sealing off the processional area. Um, you haven't got as many people in the immediate area, but here's, here's the, the big yes, moment. Yes, here's the big moment. Here's the main event. Absolutely. So the Red Arrows, because they are a professional display team, they can work to... Uh, greater weather limits than the other aircraft who have unfortunately been unable to join us. So we do get a chance to see the iconic Red Arrows in their red, white and blue as they come down the mound, which just looks fantastic. What a scene. They're currently in their 59th season. They've got another 60 displays to do this year. And where are those displays? Are they all over the world or do they tend to be in the British Isles? So the majority in the British Isles, but they do go all over the world. And this is the moment. Well, that was a wonderful moment, an iconic moment, and it would have been a great shame if the weather had put stop to what really is a sort of seal on the day, I think, John, don't you? That sort of visual spectacle of something that we've come to know and be, be in awe of and also be very fond of, that spectacle of the Red Arrows. Absolutely. The Armed Forces giving a round of applause.